because of that, this paper needs two people to present. So we have Ali, who's a first year PhD student, and we have, uh, we have Jerry, who's a master student, and they're going to tell us about how to handle uncertainty at compile time. Good afternoon. We are here today. You have to turn it on. Good afternoon. We are here today to convince you to embrace uncertainty in mobile app programming. You might be wondering why two people are presenting one paper. That's because our advisor was uncertain about who should present it, so he's like, okay, we'll, we'll present it. <laughs> so, Jerry, you are a mobile app developer, so what are you currently implementing? Okay, what I'm planning to do right now is to create a game that is pretty graphically intensive and deploy it on the app store so that, you know, make some bucks along the way. So, have you considered the energy consumption in your game? Um, I mean, you don't want people to run out of battery when they play the game within 20 minutes, right? Yeah, you're right. Yes, so I'm just planning to, you know, throw in a bunch of FL statements and, yep, should handle it fine. So, let's speak about this FL statement. So, are you going to have one threshold for all users? Um, currently thinking of setting the threshold to like 10% battery level, but I'm just not too sure. So, this is the threshold. I mean, it could be low, very low for set of people, right? Maybe, for example, for me, low battery means 30%, but for you it would mean 10%. So, how are you going to be sure about that? Um, yeah, I don't know how I handle it using my pals. So, what about the branches? Do you even know if these branches work? Um, yeah, if, if the condition isn't right, then I mean, let's know. Okay, let's assume that it works. How well would it work? Lost. I just don't have an answer. My answer to Jerry is embrace uncertainty. So, today programming languages enforce programmers to be certain about each and every line of their code. So, let's take an example. For example, if else statement. The programmer has to be, has to be certain about the condition of the of, of, uh, of statement. And also for the branches, each branch will not be executed unless the condition would be true. So what we are proposing is maybe statement. So as you can see, maybe has no condition. And each branch is dealt with as an alternative that could be selected by the app whenever it sees that this is the best alternative available at the current time. Maybe statement can be represented in a various ways. For example, multiple, multiple blocks that have different alternatives. Each block has one alternative and there is a label that helps the system to identify the statement in the code. It also can be used with variable assignments. For example, here we have string performance that could take one of these three values, low, medium, and high. And also, maybe presents a new feature that is a range shortcut for integers. For example, I don't need to enumerate each and every uh, number within a range. I just write 1 to 16. So, maybe statement can be used or used by programmers to express uncertainty. And maybe system uses testing and learning to convert that uncertainty to runtime certainty. So, as a result, our major goal in this system is to know the best alternative at runtime. 
All right, so let's uh, get to the magic behind the scenes here. So we have a piece of code here um, that is written in this way. So the presenter is Ali, or the presenter could be Jerry. So the old people prefer Ali to uh, present to them, whereas the young people prefer Jerry. That's we need to present to them. So how does uh, the app know about all of these things? Well, we'll come to that later. But this is a form of static adaptation uh, in which one option is chosen, and yep, that uh, remains steady for a long period of time. Similarly, from India, Ali is chosen to give in a presentation. From Kuwait, Jerry is chosen. And uh, coming to like dynamic adaptations, what if an app wants to behave differently during uh, during uh, times in which it's not actually used much during the night, and it wants to behave differently during the daytime? So all these are temporal adaptations, examples of temporal adaptations, and network-based adaptations as well. For example, Ali prefers to use cellular data, whereas I prefer to use Wi-Fi. So. Uh, how it works is like this. Um, the maybe system, right, has uh, adaptation algorithms embedded into itself, and uh, this adaptation algorithm chooses which block to execute. So uh, I'll talk about the adaptation algorithm, algorithm later. But this, suppose if the app developer doesn't want to be, uh, he doesn't want to give this form of uh, control to the uh, system itself, he or she could, you know, just override this uh, methodology. So our uh, advisor, so he could control, like, okay, Ali should give it the talk, or Jerry should give the talk, but as of now, he's confused and he's sitting in the back there, like, okay, you guys handle it. <laughs> so, um, moving on to, like, maybe testing. So this is how the adaptive algorithm works. Initially, the system needs to be tested, and then the system needs to be adapted for the use cases. So let's talk about testing phase first. We have a bunch of users, and we uh, execute a block, maybe the maybe block or the or block, uh, on the set of users, and we calculate the scores. And these, okay, and also uh, another block is executed on the same set of users, and the scores are calculated. Now, this is where in which the testing is done and the scores are actually evaluated. And what happens is, uh, given a bunch of users again, we apply randomly uh, which, uh, which block of code should be executed on them, and we compute these two scores again. So all of these scores are keeping track at the backend server. So the backend server, uh, yeah, um, yes, so the backend server applies some form of machine learning algorithm uh, so that it could classify, like for this particular set of users, uh, this is the best alternative that could be, uh, uh, that could be executed. All right, so um, the scores, talking about the scores, uh, what exactly is the scores uh, uh, we are talking about? The scores is computed based upon the performance and the energy consumption of the app. Uh, these are the standard way of actually how we go about measuring the scores, but you know the app developer has total control over how to measure the scores as well. So he can write a service uh, uh, like you know a JSON string or something that does a total different computation of the scores. These scores given to the backend, some form of analysis is done, and then pushed back to the app again. All right. So Ali will take over. So maybe system has a lot of use cases. For example, based on our experience in our phone lab, which is, by the way, um, large scale smartphone platform testbed, we had implemented a phone lab data collection tool that collects log data from particip participant devices. And while implementing that tool, we had a lot of questions that we needed to be certain about at development time. For example, when and how often to upload data, how often to rotate logs on the device, how much data to cache on the smartphone. We needed to be to have an answer and be sure about our answer at development time. We also had to specify an end-to-end -end performance metrics. So we ended up by writing hundreds of boring code 
when if we used maybe statement, we had end up just like by maybe tens of or dice line or two of codes by specifying the available uh, alternatives without worrying about being sure which one we should really specify at development time and leave that for the runtime. So another app that we have on the participants of Phone Lab is called Pocket Parker. So what this app basically does is to recommend a user where exactly a parking spot is available in one of the parking lots at the University of Buffalo. So uh, in order to have this set of computations, right, we had to like actually get uh, the app, uh, the geographical location information of the user, like whether the user is riding a vehicle or whether the user is uh, uh, like you know just walking from her car back to the building or something of that sort. So. Um, Okay, this app specific information, we wrote a bunch of code. And also Google produced uh, its set of code, like uh, library APIs, uh, after we actually implemented this code. So what actually uh, ended up happening is we had two alternatives, whether to use our code or whether to use the Google APIs. So how do we actually know which one is better for our needs? So we ended up putting this into the maybe or block, and uh, what we are currently, you know, testing the scores like which are written from these alternatives, and on the long run, we'll uh, get to know like which alternatives are better for our needs. So, um, fine. So uh, these were some of our use cases at the phone lab. But uh, when we look into the Android framework and the kernel, there are many places in which uncertainty could be mined upon. For example, the timer rates. Uh, the timeouts as well. When should, an, uh, when should the network uh, search be timed out? When should the Wi-Fi uh, search be timed out? Like, you know, if the app is deployed in US, uh, like, should it search for five minutes? And if the app is deployed in, uh, in an Asian country, should it search for a longer time or should it search for a lesser time? Um, cache sizes, this is another important uh, thing. Like, we are not so sure about cache sizes during compilation time, but during runtime, it's pretty important. And other things like you know performance quality trade-offs and attempts at battery level adaptation as what kind of discussion me and Ali had at the very beginning of the talk. And we are also open to like any suggestions like where do you think uncertainty needs to be measured in the kernel or the Android framework. So we want more feedback from the audience regarding that maybe at the end of the talk. So as of our current status with maybe system implementation. We are currently implementing a rewrite-based implementation for Android Java. And the maybe system consists of four core components. The first one is a preprocessor that rewrites the maybe statements uh, or converts the maybe statements into current existing conditional statements. And we also have Android service to cache values and implement adaptation algorithms. There is also a backend server to drive testing, collect data, analyze data, and broadcast data. Uh, broadcast the selected alternative. And we also have, this is a feature, I believe we also have a web interface to allow programmers to control the process. So the programmer has the choice to select one of the alternatives at any time. So for example, maybe at development time, he has just like 10 alternatives that he wasn't sure which one to select. But at runtime, he found out that one of the alternatives, as of the current uh, conditions, it's the, is the best alternative to work with. So he can set it manually using the web interface. So to summarize, you can say that Fourth certainty is a problem, particularly for mobile systems. And maybe statement and system allow programmers to express and embrace uncertainty and activate testing and machine learning techniques. So please embrace uncertainty. Thank you, and Thank we you. welcome any questions. Any questions? So, 
I'm just wondering. Uh, my name is Shiv Mishra from University of Colorado. Um, isn't that essentially a context-dependent uh, programming? You know, essentially at runtime you're trying to detect the right <coughs> context, and based on that you are choosing the whatever the right algorithm or. No. Uh, so by context-dependent. Uh, Meaning that, for example, whether it's day or night. Okay. Or you know whether you are in uh, India or in US. Mm -hmm. These are all contexts, right? Yep. So the maybe statement is right, uh, is another way to implement context dependent. Uh, yes, I mean this uh, specific logic, right, needs to be always implemented in the app. Uh, but sometimes uh, what we are talking about is the conditions that could be uncertain. The conditions could vary from uh, two to maybe hundred conditions. For example in this particular country, at this particular location, when the network statistics is so much, then execute this algorithm. More context. Yeah, so a bunch of if-else statements, like we have like four, five, six, like 10 if-else statements, we are uh, eliminating the deployment logic, which the app developer has to concentrate upon. We are deploying it for the server to handle it. So yeah, it is context dependent. Eric Bowser, I've been researching. Might have started to touch on what I was going to ask. Is this something that's natural? I think for programmers to do. What happens if you have a bunch of these nested maybe statements? Is that something that's easy to think about what will happen? Um, well, if the user is sure about the logic, then okay. Uh, sorry, if the app developer is sure about the logic, yeah. Um, so um, you can introduce it. Oh, um, um, Hao Chen from uh, UC Davis. Um, so. Um, what is the difference between the maybe statement and uh, either if or switch statement? Uh, but where um, instead of a con using a constant or an expression as the predicate, you call, say, get context mm -hmm. um, as the, the, the predicate. So what's the difference? So the difference is, uh, as we see uh, in the slides here, um, hold on a sec, yeah, just go there. Yep, uh, here uh, the condition is given, right? If battery level is lesser than threshold. Right. But the condition that whether the battery level should be considered or some other parameters also need to be considered for a set of alternatives to be executed. The app developer isn't too sure like what all, con uh, what all uh, conditions he, ne he or she needs to be uh, sure during runtime. Uh, yeah, during runtime. Sure. So essentially, you, you have um, either a library or another process as the uh, as the decision maker. And instead of uh, hard coding a logic in the predicate, you call into that uh, component or, or process. It's not a library. What was that? It's not a library. Well, con conceptually, mm -hmm. you, there is something else. It's either a component uh, or it's another process that makes the decision. So, so you call okay. into that, and you get back uh, some value. And you program the execution, which branch to take depends on the return from that uh, Module. So as far as I understand, you're saying that this could be implemented as a library? No, I'm, I'm just trying to understand uh, how to map this to existing programming tools we have. He's asking who decides ultimately what the condition is. Uh, you know, maybe statement who decides. Okay, the server decides for us. So right. the server sends a bunch of vectors back to the application based upon the statistics that it has uh, learned from the usage patterns of different users. Well, actually, I'm more thinking of, if, I've, uh, um, when I, if I really love your approach, can I just implement it using existing language, languages, such as Java, instead of using the maybe uh, keyword? Right? So in, in Java, instead of doing, writing this, I make a call to that uh, decision maker. Yes, you can. But you know, you'll have to write a bunch of anonymous classes to do that. But if you want, better constructs like maybe or 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 and leave all this deployment logic to the back end i prefer new uh, app developers would, would uh, like this interface more well, i write a switch statement can i <laughs> you can because you're not too sure about the condition right okay all right thank you all right thanks so i have something related to that as well so this seems very similar to what we used to do in odyssey etc where we did adaptation based on various CPU, etc. And the problem with those systems is the utility function turned out to be impossible to write. 
as in the little piece of magic that actually determined that battery is higher than this, that was so user-specific and app-specific that it was yeah. impossible to generalize. Do you all have any magic here that allows you to generalize this so they can actually provide this as a service? Use the maybe statements if it's done. No, that's not what I'm saying. You, to do the maybe on your server, you still need a utility function, mm -hmm. something to optimize for. And this turned out to be the place where all these adaptation systems fail miserably. I think if you get Stefan and me in the room and we, we talk about Maui and Chroma, you'll see this is where all of them fail miserably when it comes to the per user, per app util utilization and utility function. So do you all have any thoughts on how you can handle that? I mean, this is great, but when you get user, spe when you get user specific requirements, it will fail miserably. That's what we found out anyway. Yeah. Uh, well, as far as how we have thought of our prototype is to gain the statistics of users who, like, you know, a group of users who behave in a similar pattern of, in a similar set of ways. So, like, very specific uh, user implementation details. I think we'll get to know more about it only if the full system is turned out. Okay. Okay, let's dive in again.